So we're looking to take the antiderivative of t cubed sine of t squared dt. And it's not a basic u substitution, so our next thought would be integration by parts, which will, which will work. But we can actually make this thing easier to deal with. And there's, a prob there's something going on in here that makes that so, and I'll point it out here in a second. So we're going to do a u substitution, but I'm not going to use u in this uh, only because we're going to use u in integration by parts, and I don't want too many u's floating around there, meaning different things. So let's say we use z, but this is basically our substitution. So I'm going to let z equal that t squared that's in here, inside the sign. That's really similar to what we would normally do in substitution, and we get the two the dz equals 2t dt. Well, here's the big thing. I have a t squared and a t I have to account for in this thing. And then I've got a t cubed. So 2 plus 1 on the exponents there equals 3. So that tells me that this is going to be able to work out. And I'm going to split up my t cubed into t squared. And then I'm going to write my sine of t squared. And then I have my t dt. So this t is getting paired up with the dt, and all I really need is that 2. I like to add the 2 there and balance it out with a 1 half out front. I know and some people like solving for the dt, and that works just as well. Now I can make my substitution, because notice I've got t squareds everywhere, and this is just d, dz, and z is equal to t squared. So this t squared becomes a z. And so does this one. And now we have an integral all in terms of z that's actually not too bad of an integration by parts problem. This is one of our straightforward ones because this part we can get rid of by making it u. This part, whether we're taking the derivative or the antiderivative, stays pretty much the same. It's always going to be a trig function. So I'm going to let u be the z and I'm going to let du be the sine of z dz. Therefore, my u is negative cosine of z. And my du is just dz. So putting this into our integration by parts, we have uv. So the product of those two is negative, let's write the z first, just to make it a little less confusing, uh, cosine, negative z cosine of z minus the integral of v du. Excuse me, these should be v's. Negative cosine of z dz. Now I like to just take care of these constants right away, so that just makes both those positive. And I'll multiply the one half through at the end. So I have negative z cosine of z. Antiderivative of cosine is sine of z. And at the end, I've got a plus c. I don't need to multiply the plus c by 1 half. It's just some general constant. So I'm going to multiply the 1 half through. So I have negative z cosine of z over 2 plus sine of z over 2 plus c. Now, we may initially think we're done at this point because we've done quite a bit of work. But remember, our original antiderivative was in terms of t. Our final one needs to end in terms of t. Specifically, we need to substitute z t squared in for our z's. And then we'll be complete. So we'll have negative t squared cosine of t squared over 2 plus sine of t squared over 2 plus c, and there's our antiderivative. Once again, we can check by taking the derivative of this function, and we will get this one.